Hi, this is Rob McLaughlin. Welcome to Sound Advice. Today we're going to take you out in the backyard where we've got some equipment set up. We're going to go through the process of ringing in some monitors uh, for some upcoming shows that we've got going on. And uh, so we'll talk about actual process that I go through to ring them out the monitors and then uh, copying that saved information to another uh, mix. We'll also save it as a preset uh, so that we can use it on uh, uh, at any other time we need to. Anyway, I'll go through all that. Let's go. Hi, this is Rob McLaughlin. Welcome to Sound Advice. Today, we're going to go back and look at ringing out our monitors. And uh, here in Canada, we're getting ready for Canada Day, our national uh, holiday on July 1st and so we've got some gear set up outside because uh, it's a big outdoor festival. We'll probably do half a dozen bands uh, in the course of uh, sort of a festival day type process and so we're going to ring out the monitors in advance uh, of what we're doing and um, I'm going to show you that process that we would typically do on stage. Um, today we're going to do it in advance because we don't always get that luxury to do it on stage and uh, so this will give us a chance. So. Uh, I'm using SQ5 today. I've got the uh, SQ software loaded up. I'm connected, ready to go on my iPad. And I happen to be using a little uh, RTA utility on my phone. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Um, th that's going to show me uh, where things are in terms of uh, uh, fre frequency. And then I can adjust on the uh, SQ software. All right. All right, so I've got the uh, SM58 here, typically what we'll use uh, in this scenario for vocalists. Uh, I've got a wedge monitor, and uh, I've got that mic fairly hot. And so we have fired up the uh, Aux1 mix and selected the graphic EQ. So what we're going to do is force um, feedback uh, by literally kind of sticking the mic towards the speaker, which we... You know, we typically hope they don't do, but it does happen. So here's here we go. All right. So I am being very careful here to find out what frequency is jumping up there. And that's about uh, 6K. So I'm going to pull 6K down. Again, just a couple of dB. Uh, we'll just pull that down a couple of dB. That's about four. Again, I'm forcing things beyond what would normally happen, but uh, this is what we want to do. We want to get it uh, as loud as we possibly can without it feeding back. And I'm just watching the RTA. As we're going along here, and now we're getting up into 16 down a little bit. And it's got a pretty good ring right about there. And that is at about 10,000. Pull that down a little bit. All right, and we're just going to keep going through this process. And that's not bad. Hold on. Yeah. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. All right. So just to help things along a little bit, I'm going to push that microphone up a little. And we've already got this microphone is fairly hot. But we're going to push it up a little bit. And that's just going to help us out with a few more things. Yeah, I see. There we go. All right, there's uh, 31, and I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. There we go. All right, that's about 63. A little bit more. Now we're getting down in some of the 
lower 25 250 again all what I'm doing is I'm watching the RTA on my phone app uh, to give me an indication of the specific frequency that's jumping up and then just giving it a slight notch on the graphic EQ for aux one All right, that is at 1K. 1K. High one of high one up here. There we go. And you'll notice that. I'm making very small adjustments uh, to the EQ. Again, I want to find that offending frequency on the RTA. That happens to be, of course, I'm right in the sun this morning, but 2,500. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. That, so there we go. We've got a pretty good uh, approximation there. So just to recap, what I've done is force the uh, frequencies by sticking them like literally towards the mic. And somebody said once, by the way, well, you know, nobody's going to do that. Yeah. Well, if you haven't had a a festival type scenario where you've had, you know, uh, an MC walk up to the microphone and they take the microphone like this and they're not used to having a microphone. And that might be a wireless mic we've handed them as they walk on stage, for instance. And uh, when the person next to them stands to sing, they take the microphone and they drop it at their side, just like this. See, and that's exactly what I'm trying to... So that was around. Again, just below 2K. So there we go. So there we go. We've taken that a little bit more out of there. And you might get that singer that gets really involved and surely do the exact same thing. They get excited and sing on stage, and then suddenly it's the chorus and somebody else is singing, and they start waving the, you know, this microphone around as if it's, you know, doesn't have to go anywhere. But now you can see that I can do this, and I've pretty much, I've pretty much removed all the howl out of that microphone. And what this does, and I've probably got that microphone louder than I want it to be, or hotter than I need it to be. I can take it back a little bit on the air. Okay, a couple of things to note, by the way, I'm look, using the graphic EQ on the aux one channel, so I'm using the uh, uh, EQ of the actual aux output not the microphone. I'm not EQing the microphone. I'm just EQing the output from the aux channel. That's the graphic EQ that I've been changing here. And then the other thing to realize is that <clears throat> I've just been making very small changes. Okay, I'm just turning down each offending frequency as we, uh, you know, try that microphone here in the monitor again. There we go. So now it's now it's nice and clean. I can turn that microphone up even uh, when that singer says, you know, the band gets cooking and the singer says, I need more monitor. Now I'm confident that I can turn it up and uh, it's not going to feed back. Uh, as I was saying, I'm only making minor uh, small adjustments to, uh, uh, to the graphic EQ. And that's important because, uh, you know, a lot of I've done this type of video a couple of times now. And quite often people will say, oh, you're cutting too many frequencies, you know. And unfortunately, you say, oh, you got, you've left nothing left of the sound. Well, the reality is that, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that in, when we're talking about adjusting EQs, that we're um, using the term cut and boost. 
So when we use the term cut and boost, uh, typically when we move the fader above zero, we say we're boosting a frequency. When we move the fader below zero, we use the term we're cutting a, a certain frequency, making a cut to that frequency. But unfortunately, people are under the impression that when the word cut means to actually cut out a frequency, to actually remove it uh, from the entire sound. And that's just not the case. In fact, it's almost literally impossible to remove or complete remove one single frequency out of any kind of sound source. And so the best I can do with a graphic EQ is just to turn it down just a little bit. And you can see on the graphic EQ here that I've only turned most of these uh, fending frequencies down, maybe two or three or maybe four dB uh, in total. And so again, I haven't removed any frequencies from the sound. I've just turned certain offending frequencies uh, down just a little bit. So for those of you who are concerned that I'm cutting too many frequencies, etc., I'm not removing any frequencies, just to be clear on that. And again, you know, I can point this microphone at the speaker and uh, I, I don't get any howl because I've removed all the offending frequencies. All right, I hope that helps you. Now, now that I've got the, uh, uh, the EQ created, I'll just put this microphone back. But now that I have the EQ created uh, on the SQ5, I can take that and simply copy and paste. All right, now we've gone through the process of ringing out that monitor. That uh, happens to be an EV uh, ZX3, I think it is. Uh, we want to save that so that uh, we can recall it on the day of the production, or we can reuse it at another time, or if we have to tweak it, we can always use it, go back as a, as a, uh, uh, a base to, to start with. So on the iPad app, and this is just much easier to do, I'm going to do it on the iPad app, you can do it with the copy and paste function on the board as well, but this just happens to be easier. I'm going to, again, I've got aux1 selected, and I'm going to double tap on the graphic EQ. And when I do that, I'm going to get an option to copy or reset. So I'm going to select the copy function, right? And then I'm going to go to another aux. So this is where I want to... Uh, uh, use that again and I can double tap here and now I've got the paste function if I click paste see I get it right there so I'm gonna do it on, that's one way of transferring it from one mix to another but again uh, what we want to do is go back to aux1 and uh, on aux1 when, when I have the graphic EQ selected aux1 I'm gonna click the library button so I click library and uh, it's gonna give me factory uh, presets as well as user presets. Now I've already created these but I'll create another one just for the sake of it. So what I'm going to do is create a preset of that EQ that I created. I'm going to click store now. I'm going to type in a title. This will be a ZX3 uh, so I know which monitor it is and I'll just do uh, 4.0 just so I have a, a different version. Click done and I now have that preset saved so let's take a look here uh i'll move to the board now we can do it you can do it on the, the uh, software as well uh if i now go select my library button you'll see i there's the three uh presets that i saved myself again i've selected user instead of factory there's all the factory and there's the user and there's that where i saved it a moment ago it's at x3 4.0 and I simply hit recall. Once I hit recall, I will bring that into, load it into this. So let's go to, um, let's go to one of my other, I'm in the aux three, okay. And I am going to select the library and select ZX4A and recall. And you'll see, you know, it changes pretty quickly, but that's now my preset. So this way I can now recall the graphic EQ uh, as a preset rather than having to uh, save a scene and scene of course is the whole board and I typically don't want to reset everything on the board to that scene just to get my graphic EQ back so important that you save the the preset and uh, um, that way you can load it back in uh, as you need it. Well thank you for joining us today hopefully that process was helpful to you and uh, 
Uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things. I said during that video, I realized a couple of times that uh, this is my process. It's my process and it's the process that I use, but I didn't invent this. Uh, I've, these are things that I've learned along the way from uh, lots of other people who have been very helpful to me. And uh, so just to clarify, you know, it's not something that I invented or created or came up with. Uh, but it is a process that I've used many, many times. Uh, for somebody who commented that uh, on one of my other videos that, you know, the singers aren't going to be very happy because I've made so many cuts to their EQ. Uh, in fact, I get the, exactly the opposite uh, response from the singers that come off stage and will compliment me on how wonderful the stage volume was. That's, again, because I, I'm able to get their uh, vocal mics good and loud, plenty hot in the monitor, uh, and they're very, very happy with that. And I've never had uh, a vocal mic howl back at me or a singer in the middle of a set, and uh, they've come to appreciate that. Anyway, again, hopefully it was helpful to you. We'll see you uh, on our next episode.